Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, good morning or good evening. So I am Zhi Yaoxie. So I got my PhD degree from Duke University. So in this talk, I'm going to introduce our work named Apollo. So as indicated by this title, Apollo is an automated power modeling framework for runtime power introspection in high volume commercial microprocessors. First, I'm going to start with a high level summary of this talk. The problems we tackle in this talk are power delivery challenges caused by high performance features in modern CPUs. This work is based on a key idea that 0.05% of RTL signals can already provide enough information for power estimation. And this work is based, oh, sorry, this work contributes a fast and accurate design time power model and a low cost runtime on chip power meter, OPM. And the development process is fully automated for any given design. And this work is evaluated on two ARM microprocessors named Nervous N1 and Cortex A77, both of which are shipping in high volume. I want to begin by talking about the problems that drive this work. And that starts with the fundamental trade-off that exists between the CPU performance and power consumption. CPU microarchitects put significant effort in delivering generational gains in IPC and maximum frequency. However, this is increasingly difficult and requires more transistor integration, further parallelism, and more vectored executions. And this, of course, inevitably costs higher switching activities, which adversely impacts the CPU power and current demand. And on the other hand, the power delivery resources have not kept pace. For example, the metal interconnects are particularly resistive at five nanometer and below. Also, the packaging technology has progressed at a slow rate and unable to sustain the DI by DT demands of modern CPUs. Due to this increased power sensitivity, there is a greater need for design time power introspection or estimation. And not just design time, modern CPU systems also need power and thermal management at their runtime. For example, peak power mitigation techniques often rely on the pipeline instruction throttling. The throttling algorithms are then driven by the manually inferred power proxies. However, inferring proxies manually is very difficult in complex modern CPUs. And a more serious problem is the abrupt change in CPU current demand, named DI by DT events, which leads to deep voltage droops. As shown in this red figure, when there is a workload driven increase in power or current demand, there would be a sharp voltage droop in a very short time. So this raises a high requirement on the response latency of any mitigation techniques. And get Getting the runtime mitigation correct is important, particularly in many core socks. And to ensure the correct mitigation, designers need careful and extensive power characterization or modeling with real-world workloads. In industry, this is often done by using an emulator to em emulate the Intel analyst. However, the emulator is expensive and this flow can take up to weeks. And in addition, this only gives us the average power consumption over millions of cycles. This does not scale to the analysis on the aforementioned DI by DT events because of its limited temporal resolution. So Apollo was essentially motivated to address all these three problems. As this figure shows, existing power modeling solutions provide a stark trade-off between the accuracy and the speed. Apollo's objective is to bridge this gap between accuracy and speed. Reasonably accurate power can be obtained in minutes instead of weeks. So what are the key differentiating attributes of Apollo? First, it, uh, it does the automated power proxy extraction. It uses data-driven techniques to automatically identify the power correlated contributors in a design. So this is design and microarchitecture agnostic Therefore, in principle, it scale and apply to all manners of compute solutions. And second, Apollo enables fast and accurate on-chip power monitoring. So the per cycle accuracy is around 
the low cost model can be synthesized into an on-chip power meter with only 0.2% area overhead over the nearest N1 CPU core. And third, the Apollo supports per cycle temporal resolution. The per cycle resolution enables the scaling of power simulation, runtime diabetes mitigation, and emulator integration all with the same framework. And finally, we believe this methodology is extensible to higher abstraction uh, simulations. And this slide shows a summary of the Apollo. It works by constructing a linear power model on selected power proxies. So these selected power proxies are power correlated RTL signals in the design. And the model can be implemented as an on-chip power meter denoted as the uh, OPM here. And this is the workload execution preview with Apollo. This trace is the hammer sim point from spec and running on the nearest N1 CPU core. The entire sim point is 17 million cycles. And here we only show part of the trace with 40,000 cycles. And running it on the emulator takes about two weeks overall. And in comparison, Apollo can approach within 90 to 95% accuracy within a few minutes. And also, I want to emphasize the unprecedented per cycle temporal resolution in this plot. It enables us to trace the aforementioned workload during variations in the current demand. So these are the strengths of Apollo. And now I will start to introduce how we construct such a power model. And this slide shows the details on how we train the power model based on any given design. So we firstly generate the simulation traces of all RTL signals in the design with some benchmarks. And after that, at each cycle, we collect the toggling activity of all signals. As shown in this figure, one means toggle and zero means not toggling. In this way, this waveform can be converted to a matrix of toggling activities. And this is a raw input of our power model denoted as this capital X. The horizontal dimension of the feature vector equals the number of signals in the design, denoted as this M. And our ground truth labels are the per cycle power data generated from the simulation, denoted as this Y. Our goal is to construct a data-driven model F by training with X and Y. However, for industrial microprocessors, the number of features M can be larger than 1 million. So the next question is, how we construct an efficient linear model through the automatic proxy selection. And we start with the linear model with all M RTL signals as the inputs. And in the first step, the proxy selection is achieved by pruning, which means chaining the model with certain extra penalty terms in the loss function. So those penalty terms will penalize weights when optimizing the loss function. And as a result, some unimportant weights will shrink to zero. And in this pruning process, our goal is to remove most weights and leave only Q non-zero weights. So we will set the penalty strength to be very large, such that most weights will shrink to zero. And then we only keep the signals corresponding to those non-zero weights, and they are selected as the power proxies as final inputs. So for the pruning process, we apply the minimax concave penalty, MCP, as the penalty term. After this selection, we will retrain the model only on the power proxies from scratch in the second step. And this time, we apply a weak penalty strength just to avoid the overfitting. So the model with such Q retrain weights will be the finalized power model in the Apollo. So this is the main model construction method. And to verify this Apollo method, it is implemented on the Nervous N1 and Cortex A77. So both of the CPUs are shipping in high volume. And we train the power model on a diverse set of completely machine generated workloads, including both low power and high power training workloads. And then we train the model on various power indicative workloads from R. So the power consumption of these testing workloads are shown in this right plot. The x-axis is the cycle index and the y-axis is the actual power value. And to thoroughly validate our model, these testing workloads also cover a diverse set of power regions. We can see that there are steady state regions and transient regions. And now let's look at how the Apollo performs on these different types of testing workloads. 
And this figure shows the per cycle prediction from the Apollo model. Here, it only includes 159 power proxies as inputs. And we can see that the prediction trace in green curve has a great agreement with the ground truth envelope in pink. And we measure the prediction accuracy in the mean absolute error MAE and R squared correlation. So for the MAE, the smaller the better. And for the R squared value, larger means higher accuracy. And then we also measure the performance on every workload separately. We see that the MAE is less than 10% for all workloads. In addition, we notice that this error is largely due to the small variations in cycle by cycle estimations. Because if you zoom in the curves in more details, there are only small error between the neighboring uh, cycles. And this per cycle prediction error will be averaged under larger measurement windows. In real world applications, the impact of this minor per cycle inaccuracies is inconsequential. Now let's look at an example. Actually, the Apollo accommodates any measurement windows besides the per cycle power tracing. For example, we can set the measurement window size equal to 128 cycles. And here is the predicted power traces on all testing workloads. And notice that the model we present only selects 70 proxies as its input. And we can observe that the prediction and label correlate better than the per cycle case as shown in this arrow and the correlation. And since the Apollo achieves high accuracy with few proxies, it is possible to directly synthesize this power model as part of the CPU RTL and as our runtime on-chip power meter, OPM. To implement the OPM on CPU, we start with the design time Apollo model. As mentioned, it only takes Q binary features as input. And then we perform the weight quantization to get W bit quantized weights. And since the inputs are binary, we do not need any multipliers in the OPM. And after that, we can easily implement the OPM on hardware by directly configuring an OPM template in C++. And then we do a high level synthesis to get the OPM in RTL. Based on the OPM implementation in C++, we can also easily verify the accuracy of the OPM hardware design and compare it with the aforementioned design time power model. For example, this is the aforementioned uh, prediction results from the Apollo design time model. And the bottom figure is a prediction from the OPM hardware implementation after the quantization generated from the C++ implementation. And we can see the difference is negligible. So we can generate a very low cost OPM on hardware without sacrificing accuracy. <laughs> and of course, there is still a trade-off between the accuracy and hardware implementation cost. And we have a study on this. We measure the uh, power estimation accuracy in error in the z-axis and use the color to indicate the hardware cost measured in area overhead. And then we study the trade-off between the performance and uh, hardware cost by, ch by choosing the different proxy number Q and the quantization base W. And this is the measurement result. Uh, based on this result, our strategy is to keep the quantization bits W equal to 10 to 12 bits and then vary the Q for different solutions. For example, for an OPM solution at this point, the input proxy number Q equals 159 and the quantization bits W equals 11. And this OPM achieves less than 0.2% area overhead of the CPU and less than 10% in the error. And so up to now, we have covered how the model perform for both design time power modeling and runtime power estimation. And before I conclude, I want to briefly touch on the potential applications of this technology. The first application uh, targets benefiting the design time power optimization. To achieve this, we can use the Apollo model to analyze the power contributors for designers. Since the Apollo selects the various types of signals as uh, input proxies, as this pie chart shows, these proxies are from different sub-blocks in the design. And in practice, some signals are actually semantically more meaningful to the designers. 
So it is beneficial to create an Apollo model only with the designer identified signals as the feature candidates. And in this way, the resulting model has much better interpretability and benefits the design decisions. And the second potential application is for runtime. We can apply the OPM in proactive DI by DT mitigation. The so y-axis here shows the per cycle DI by DT prediction from the OPM, and the x-axis shows the ground truth. And we can see the Pearson correlation in this prediction is around 0.95, indicating a high correlation between the OPM implementations versus the ground truth. So this plot indicates that large excursions for both voltage droop and overshoot are captured by this OPM. And so this is one application at runtime, which in enables the CPU-driven proactive DI by DT mitigation. And in summary, <laughs> we propose a fast power modeling method, which has a material impact in how we design and deploy CPUs. And in this work, microarchitecture agnostic methodology is automated and it can scale to multiple compute solutions. And this work enables many potential applications from the power and thermal measurement in SOX to CPU-driven proactive droop mitigation. And lastly, we believe ML approaches are potential disruptors to many aspects of the design. So this is the end of my talk. Thanks a lot for your attention. So okay, do you have thank any? you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much for the excellent talk. Uh, that is a very excellent work on the power modeling. And uh, could you please uh, look at the chat box? Uh, there are some questions here. Yeah. Sure, yeah, I'm reading this. So the question is, um, so they are uh, very curious about the possibility to run the proposed approach on different CPUs uh, such as Intel. Well, this is a good question. So uh, as, as I mentioned, so in principle, we believe this method can be easily transferred to different designs because it doesn't require any like prior knowledge on the design or we even believe it can scale to like GPUs. So, so I think it, it should not be very difficult to uh, implement on Intel or any other open source CPUs. But as for the result, it, it requires more experiment. So I, what I mean is we, we can easily implement this, yeah. And uh, the second question is, Apollo focused on the CPU. We are wondering the challenges to support GPUs. Oh yeah, that's a, a similar question. So uh, yeah, we believe the methodology should be the same. You just go through the automated flow for any given design. As long as you have the RTL, you have the test bench, you can always try our uh, model to, to the design. 